Hey there. In this tutorial, I'm going to introduce a couple of new topics. The first is prefabs. Prefabs are like templates, but for game objects. Um, prefabs can contain nested game objects and have behavior like any other game object can in your scene. You can then take a prefab and create as many copies of it as you like. And this is really handy for things like enemies and projectiles, where you might want many of the same type of enemy to be on screen. We're going to create an arrow projectile for our player to avoid, and then we're going to prefab it up so we can take as many copies as we want and get plenty of those on screen. So I'll first create a sprite renderer, and we'll call it arrow, set it to the arrow sprite we've got in this project, and then just place it next to the player, um, something like that. I'll then just create an arrow component that we can attach to our arrow and give it some behavior. Just get rid of the start function. And in the update function, I'm going to move the arrow left along its x-axis. So first I'll just create a speed const. And I'm using this transform.right value here. Transform.right is going to be uh, along where this red arrow is placed along the x-axis. So if you rotate that arrow, it also rotates this transform.right. If you move the transform position, in the opposite of the transform.right, it's always going to move to the left, no matter how the arrow is rotated. So we could drop arrows from the top of the screen and they'll drop straight down. So if we drag this arrow into our um, assets project directory, it turns blue in the scene. This signifies it's been turned into a prefab. Uh, you can then use this arrow in any scene by dragging it from the project into the scene. So you could delete it from here and recreate it again by just dragging it into the scene. So next we're going to create a spawn point. So I'll just create an object that's going to hold them first. And I'll move it to roughly the position where we want to spawn arrows from. Um, and create another spawn point script. And drag it onto our spawn point. So the whole point of this class is it's going to create a constant stream of arrows to throw at our player. So the first thing we'll do is just create a little timer. So every two seconds, let's say, uh, we're going to call a function which is going to create as a new arrow. And we'll do that by having our timer float and we'll just take off delta time every frame until it's less than or equal to zero. At that point, we're going to spawn an arrow and reset the timer. All reset time is going to do is just set our timer back to that constant that we've created. In update, we're going to take away from our timer until it's less than or equal to zero, at which point we'll spawn an arrow and then reset it. So to spawn the arrow, we'll have a, a public game object reference to our arrow prefab. And then when we spawn the arrow, we're going to call a function called instantiate on our arrow prefab. And all instantiate does is it takes a copy of the game object that it's passed in we can just set the position of it to be the position of this spawn point. So the arrow will start off at this spawn point and move forwards. And the same for rotation. If we just try that out, we can delete our arrow prefab from the scene because it's not needed, now it's inside the project. And then on our spawn point, we can attach this arrow. If we quick play, we've got a, an endless stream of arrows coming from our spawn point every two seconds towards our player. Cool, but we just need to do a little bit of cleanup now. So what we should do is when these arrows have traveled too far, then uh, we'll just destroy them and get rid of them because none of the arrows over here has any chance of ever hitting the player. And we'll just put a little check in here called should be destroyed. And in our update function, we'll check if we should be destroyed. And if so, we're just gonna destroy the game object that this script is set on. And we'll say that we're going to be destroyed if the distance from the centre of the world is greater than um, 30 units. If you play again, our arrows are now spawned, but when they go too far, they're getting destroyed and cleaned up. So that's prefabs. It's really handy for creating copies of objects. So the second topic I'm going to talk about is the resources folder. So resources is a magical place inside Unity. Any assets that you add into this directory will be accessible by script. 
this is useful if you want to reduce the number of public references like this that you have to maintain, or if you want to decide which asset you're going to load at runtime. So to make our arrow accessible to script, we have to add it to a folder called resources. We'll just drag that in there. And Unity collects all this uh, information together for us so that when we're in our script at runtime, we can access anything inside a folder that's called resources. As a little tip, this can be nested inside anything else. So I could drag this inside the animations folder. Uh, and at runtime, it'll take all your separate resources folders, and merge them into one for you behind the scenes, and you can just access it uh, with a path that's relative to the resources directory. So I just load this by passing in arrow. So if you open up our spawn point script, we'll add the start function back in. Instead of assigning to the arrow prefab uh, via Unity itself, what we'll do is we'll load this arrow prefab up from resources. So you do that by saying resources.load, you pass in the type that you want to get back, which is a game object, and the path that it's going to be at. So to spice things up a little more, let's create some spawn points that are coming down from the top of the screen. I'll just duplicate uh, existing horizontal spawn point, drag it somewhere above the player, um, and then put a rotation on it, and the same for over here. And because when we're spawning the arrow, we're spawning it with the exact rotation of our spawn points. So it'll spawn at 90 degrees, and our arrows using transform.right to move. Our arrows will just move down the screen without any extra code needed. Cool. As a final touch, let's add some random positioning um, to where our arrows are starting. So we're probably just going to want this for the two vertical spawners, because the horizontal one should always be at the same height, so we can always jump over it. So first we'll create a, a public bool, we'll call it randomized spawn point. We'll set this in the editor, and if it's true, then we're going to add some randomness to this, the position, and if not, we'll just leave it as the spawner position. We'll also add another couple of floats, one for the... Uh, minimum distance that our arrow can be from when it starts relative to this spawn point and another one for the maximum position it can be relative to this spawn point. And we'll, when we're going to spawn the arrow we'll just say that if randomized spawn point is set we're going to want to affect the position in here so I'll cache off the current position of the spawner which is normally where we're going to create our arrow at and if randomized spawn point is set I'll find a random position between the minimum spawn point and the maximum spawn point. I'll then apply this to the current position that we've cached off and then set our spawn point to be this current position value that we've just changed. So if I jump back to Unity, turn our two vertical spawn points to randomize, set a minimum something like minus five and a maximum of five. Our vertical position should change each time and our horizontal one stays the same. All right then. Hopefully you now understand the usefulness of prefabs and how they're great for setting up uh, reusable objects and the resources folder where you can load any assets you want that are in there from script. There's a link to the GitHub repo for this tutorial in the description. Keep watching for the next video in the series and I'll walk you through how to get collisions going between the player and the arrows that we've created. Thanks for watching.